this broke my heart yesterday. Uh, MSNBC's Rachel Maddow and a friend of the show um, ended the night in tears. She got choked up while sharing a new story about what's happening uh, with the youngest, you know, like with the children that are being separated from their parents at the border. The AP has just broken some new news. Um, this has just come out from the Associated Press. This is incredible. Trump administration officials have been sending babies and other young children. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> to at least three. Oh. Can we put up the graphic of this? Thank you. Do we have it? No. Three tender age shelters in South Texas. Lawyers and medical providers. Just. I'm gonna have to hand this off. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That does it for us tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow. Now it is time for the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell, where he is live in Brownsville, Texas. That's why we love you, Rachel. You're a human being. You're not just a talking head. You don't have to apologize. Now, what she was about to report was the Trump administration has opened up three quote tender age detention centers in South Texas for babies that have been forcibly taken from their parents. A fourth in infant detention center is about to be opened. Infants. We're housing infants away from their parents. So we can uh, have a no tolerance policy. And look up the name Stephen Miller. A graduate of Duke University, a known racist and white supremacist who still writes speeches for Donald Trump. And plan this whole thing alongside the Trump team to take it these measures this far. So that it would emotionally compromise us as a society and people would have to make a choice. Do we want the wall? Or nah? They're using children, infants, as, as a negotiation tactic to get their way. And, you know, <clears throat> I've been saying it for the last few days, and I think everybody up here agrees. A, we wouldn't be seeing this if these children were blonde hair, blue eyed. <clears throat> white this would not be happening and we also know that this has happened to every person of colors ancestry in this country damn near whether it was black folks in slavery Japanese people in internment camps Jewish people during World War II in Germany Chinese people. So, I know, man, it's it, every day it's been something emotional. And we just have to stay strong as uh, a community and people who, who believe that this American thing, um, the social experiment of America could actually become something great. Because it hasn't been great. There's no again. It's becoming something great. I'm following the Gail King story, and uh, yep, so far photos released from the detention centers do not show any girls. They've released only photos showing boys in these holding facilities. They say that they've repeatedly asked and for photos, access, and they continue to deny them. They haven't been able to tell them where the girls separated from their families are being sent. Nothing. Where are the girls? Here's the deal, right? Back home, um, I know of a lot of families from El Salvador and their stories, Honduras, and, you know, my family's from Guatemala. But, you know, one of the reasons my, my mom left where she was at is because her family was being terrorized by um, the government. My aunt was sexually assaulted. My grandmother also had to deal with that. And when my mom had her first child, um, in fear, 
of getting sexually assaulted when my brother who passed away um, was sick. She couldn't even leave her house to go to the hospital and my brother never made it to the next day. And people who are quick to say, just come here legally. It takes o- over a decade for you to Good possibly, luck. maybe, and most of the time it's not going to happen. Nope. It took my sister 12 years to come here legally. What'd you say, Juanito? It took my mom at least 20, my dad at least 15. Imagine they came here when they were like 20. It took them at least to 40, almost, to get like citizenship. And it's not easy. Like my mom got deported twice. She probably got raped. She probably didn't tell us. She got beaten. You know, she been through a lot, you know. My dad's probably been through the same thing. He had to, he had to smuggle my older brother into California so he could be born here, so he could have a better life. One of my brothers couldn't make it. He got at the border. He got uh, they got caught, so they went back to Mexico. So he was born in Mexico. So he was on, he was able to get papers. And this is my middle brother, so he didn't get, he didn't get his papers until he was like twenty five, and he was born into the U.S. when he was two years old. So it's like it, it happens, and and. and- To uh, give a larger perspective to everyone listening, why these countries are going through what they go through, most of the time it's because of American foreign policy that has hurt the economies, the ability to create industry in these countries and job opportunities. Then you have the reality in some of these places, you keep hearing about MS-13. MS-13 was created in Los Angeles, California. Those were El Salvadorian kids being picked on by Mexican gangs and black gangs. And so MS-13 was created because they were trying to protect themselves. They end up getting caught up in, in, in doing teenage stupid stuff and get deported to El Salvador. And if you were listening earlier, Laura Styles told the story when she was in Guatemala as a teenager. What did you see at the airport? So on my way to Guatemala, I stopped by El Salvador. And I remember specifically being at the airport in El Salvador. And dozens of MS-13 people were being deported. And when we asked, like, what happens to them now? Like, they were criminals. Nothing. So basically, these... People who have been terrorizing people, murdering people, raping people, they get to El Salvador and they're free. The government is so corrupt that they're free. So they're free to terrorize families, to kill, to rape, to murder, to kidnap the people in El Salvador. And that's why a lot of the families are fleeing because they cannot live in their own country. Mm. Mm -mm. The veil's being lifted. We're living, we're watching it happen in real time. And, and being able to have this conversation, the veil of the truth of American foreign policy and who we really are and have been as a country is being lifted and we're watching it happen right now. And I know it's tough and I know people have their kids and you're trying to figure out how to explain it to them, but we're having a, a what is called a reckoning right this moment.